Hello everybody and welcome back to the Young Fan Podcast. Today I'm going to be doing my England 11 and my 23-man squad that I believe Gareth Southgate should take to the Euros this summer. I'm extremely excited for this tournament. It's been pushed back a year. We're here now in the summer hoping that England can do much better than they normally do in European Championships off the back of a really, really good World Cup. We've got some great players that have burst onto the scene since the last tournament. Some young, exciting players. Prospects. We've also got players as well that played in that tournament that have improved as well. So it's really, really exciting. And Gareth Southgate has got some huge decisions to make, some really, really difficult decisions because there's so many fantastic English players that surely have got to go to the Euros and have surely got to get themselves in that 23-man squad. But 23 men really isn't a lot when you think about it. It's really quite difficult. And if you want to do this as well, get involved by sending in your England starting 11 by DMing it to the Instagram page at the Young Fan Podcast on there. I'm going to be reacting to some of your most exciting and interesting England starting 11 on another episode of the podcast. So definitely get involved with this. But today I'm going to be doing my starting 11 and 23 man squad. I'm going to be going through and justifying why I've picked each player and why I think that should be the team that Gareth Southgate should definitely be picking in the Euros as well. But I must also stress, it's very, very difficult. It's not easy at all because, like I said, we've got some great, in fact, incredible players that could go to the tournament. So, on the screen right now, you're probably going to be a little bit confused. It looks a little bit complicated. It looks like something you get out of a maths paper at GCSE. It's not as simple. Uh, sorry, it's not as it's not as complicated as it is. It's very, very quite, it's quite simple, to be honest with you. It is quite simple. We look at the goalkeeper first. We're going to go through position, of course, and we're going to go through, and we're going to start with the goalkeeper. Now, you can see on the screen, I've gone with the 4-3-3. It's the formation I think Gareth Southgate should pick. I know he likes playing the five at the back, three at the back sort of thing, you know, with the three centre backs and the wing backs. Some call it five, some call it three. It depends, you know, you know, it really depends what, how you look at it. But I sort of see it as a bit of a three with the wing backs. However, I've not gone with that. I've gone with the four. The reason for that is simple because I don't think we have enough centre backs in this squad, enough English centre backs that I think are good enough to start in that three and then also have players as well, uh, you know, in that squad that can also play at centre back. Because obviously you need cover, injuries, lots of games in a short amount of time in a competition like this it's not easy at all now remember as well I'm going off a criteria okay I don't want to be plucking players out of thin air I don't want to be just putting players in for the sake of it I want to be going for a really really good sort of criteria list to make sure that I'm picking the best squad so I've gone with quality form and versatility three really really important things they're pretty self-explanatory but of course quality is I need the best players I need the quality players obviously that's what you need in a successful uh, tournament like this of of course, form as well. You don't want to be picking players that are out of form, not playing games, not playing... Um as well as other players, you want players on the top of their game and go into a competition like this. So they're thriving with confidence and, of course, form and versatility as well. Like I've said, with lots of games in a short amount of time, uh, you know, and a, and a really, really high chance of injuries in these competitions. Because, like I said, games come thick and fast. You need players that can play in multiple positions. And also, it's only a 23-man squad as well. You haven't got, you know, 40, 50 places in this squad just to take a full load of English players. You look at the screen as well. Again, I'll put it back on. You can see... Um, the amount of depth we've got in positions, you know, you can't take all of those players and just pick and choose what you want. You need to pick a really, really good 23-man squad with three really important factors. And I've gone with form, quality and versatility to get the best out of a really, really good bunch of English players. So with the goalkeeper, using that criteria, I've got my main sort of, I, I've listed the players I think are, are, are good options. So I've got uh, Nick Pope of obviously Burnley, I've got Pickford of Everton, Dean Henderson of Manchester United, Johnstone and Darlow as well. So some really, really good goalkeepers there. Some out of form, some in a form, some playing a lot of football, some not playing a lot of football. However, I've gone with the three that I think Gareth Southgate will go with. I'm not, you know, predict this isn't me predicting the squad. I think if we did that, we'd see some really, really different players than the ones I've picked is some really different decisions that I've made compared to Gareth Southgate. However, I've gone with the three that I think Gareth Southgate would pick, and I think that's who I'd pick as well. Nothing against Johnstone and, and, and Dala. I think those are really two really, really good goalkeepers, but they haven't had England call-ups yet. Uh, well, they mean that Johnstone did have one in the last one, but he hasn't played a game yet. Dala hasn't had an England call-up. I can't see him not going for, you know, not having a call-up to then going to a competition like the European Championships. I think Pope, for me, is starting the team. Uh, so in the team there, you see the team um, and then the players in the light blue. They're the ones that are going to go 
and my squad, and the ones highlighted in red are the ones that are starting in my starting 11. So I've started Nick Pope. I think he's the better goalkeeper out of the three. Dean Henderson hasn't had enough club experience yet. He had a really good season at Sheffield United last year, but he hasn't played a lot, enough games for me for, for a really, really good side at Manchester United. Um, I know he is sort of in and out of favour. I think he now might be the number one with De Gea maybe leaving, but we need to see more of Dean Henderson. And also he needs to play a bit more international football as well. I don't think he's actually played a game for England yet, for, certainly for the first team, the senior squad. I don't think he has. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't really remember that happening. So for me, Dean Henderson, really good young goalkeeper that I think really, really has a bright future for England. But right now, I just don't think he does. Uh, same with Pickford as well. Uh, you know, Pickford makes a lot of errors for Everton this season. Uh, you know, he has got the experience. He had a really, really good World Cup. But yeah, he hasn't got the experience yet. And I think that for me is, is a reason why... Um, you know, he, he isn't going to start for me. There's errors that he's made this season for Everton. They just are very, very costly. And we can't afford to have a player like that in the squad. Uh, in, certainly in the starting 11. He's definitely going to the squad. But in the starting 11, we can't have a player uh, that, 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 that's, that's known to do these sort of things. Of course, when we're looking at the criteria again, he's definitely got quality. Has he got the form this season? Obviously, versatility for a goalkeeper doesn't work. But you're looking at that uh, form and uh, quality. Certainly he's got the quality, but the form this season hasn't been good enough. For me, Pope ticks more of the boxes than the other ones and that's why I'm starting Nick Pope in goal and those are the three goalkeepers I'm taking in my 23-man squad for England this summer. So right back then, probably the most interesting talking point. I've gone with uh, the players on the screen right now. These are the players that I'm going to potentially be taking to my squad and these are the players that I think Gareth Southgate has options for and now the depth we have in positions. There are a few more, but these are the main ones. Uh, we've got Kyle Walker, Reese James, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Trippier, Aaron Wan-Bissaka and uh, Lamptey of Brighton. So some really, really good options there. And that's the problem we've got. We've got so many fantastic options at right back for England. And like I said there, lots of those players do tick the boxes. However, you can't really take more than three. You don't really need to take more than three. You probably could get away with only taking two, but I'm going to take three because we've got the quality uh, and, and we've got that much quality in uh, this, this England squad. But again, you probably could take six like there are there. I mean, you wouldn't take six, but you could because they've all really hold that fantastic quality that could easily play for England. However... Lamptey this season, he's been injured a little bit, you know, he's had moments where you, you haven't really seen much of um, of Lamptey, and of course he hasn't had an England call-up yet, so for me, he's not ready yet, but however, in the future, I think he's a really, really exciting player, and I think someone, uh, you know, I think for him, I think he's got a really, really exciting future for England, but right now, I don't think he has. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, the same sort of thing, I think he's been really, really good for Manchester United defensively, offensively though, that final ball, that final pass, that final product, he really has struggled with, so for me, Aaron Wan-Bissaka doesn't get into this squad, but he is quite unlucky in that sense. But again, you are hindered by the fact you've got some fantastic players in front of you. And for me, Trippier is a little bit like the same as well. I think defensively, he's pretty decent going forward as well. We know what he can do. We saw him in the World Cup doing really, really well as well. But again, you've got three players in front of them that arguably are better than all of those three. And they tick more boxes. We talk about Kyle Walker being my starting right back. That's who I've chosen with, but that's very controversial on his own. But I think for Kyle Walker, he definitely ticks the boxes and with James uh, Reese James as well and Trent those are two players as well that with, with Trent Alexander-Arnold in particular he's very good going forward but he's very very questionable defensively I think you do see better uh, better performance with Trent Alexander-Arnold when he's got a world class centre back behind him this season for Liverpool he hasn't had that with Van Dijk being injured you have seen that bit that exposure of Trent defensively however going forward as well there's no question he's an incredible player going forward but defensively he is a little bit of a, a little bit of a liability at times we talk about Reese James as well I think Reese James is quite unlucky not to start because again he is good defensively and also going forward as well he's a good player however again it does come down to international experience for me Walker ticks all the boxes he ticks that experience he ticks really good uh, you know he's error prime but everyone makes mistakes we talk about a really really good player uh, defensively and going forward as well great pace as well so a really really good player in Kyle Walker and that's what I want to see start however Trent, Reese James, any of those starting, I wouldn't be complaining, but I've gone with Kyle Walker there. Centre-backs then. I've gone, of course, my four at the back with two centre-backs. I've gone with John Stones of Manchester City and Harry Maguire. However, the players you could play, we've got Dunk, we've got Mings, we've got Godfrey, we've got Tarkovsky, we've got Dyne, we've got Connor Cody, Joe Gomez and Concert of Villa. So, some really good options there. So, you know, eight incredible options. In fact, that's ten, isn't it? Ten incredible options. So, you know, so, well, not, incre not all incredible, but ten very, very good options. It's good to see a good depth. There are some really, really good options in there as well. We talk about Harry Maguire, you know, a little bit questionable at times for Manchester United. 
However, for England, he seems to turn on the heat. He seems to have a really, really good, uh, he seems to have really good performances in an England shirt. And we saw him in the World Cup last season. He was very, very good. Really impressive Harry Maguire last season. And that performance is, you know, got him that move to Manchester United. So really, really good to see Harry Maguire. And I really like Harry Maguire. Generally, he's got some really, really good traits about him. Good in the air. Generally quite good in the forwards when we're talking about playing the ball. I really like Harry Maguire. Yeah, he's got a few mistakes in him. And yeah, at times he doesn't look good enough. However, generally, I think he is my main centre-back that I want to go with. And then John Stones next to him as well. He does really complement each other. You've got John Stones that maybe isn't as good in the air, but he's really, really good on the ball and also extremely well, much quicker than Harry Maguire, which you need someone to compliment. You can't have two um, slow centre backs. You can't have two. You can have two, I guess, quick centre backs. But you need them if you're going to have Harry Maguire, who's good in the air. You need some, but a little bit slower. You need someone with a little bit more pace next to him, and that's why I've gone with John Stones. There. So John Stones and Harry Maguire. But again, I think Dyer probably will go to this competition. We know what Gareth Southgate and Dyer is all about. However. I would take Connor Cody. He's a really, really good option for England. And also, he's had a really, really good campaign at Wolves. He's the captain, of course, as well. So, yeah, really like Connor Cody. We've got some lots of options there as well. Dunk, Mings, Mings may go. Godfrey as well. Good option at Everton. Had a good first season there. Tarkovsky as well of Burnley. Don't think he's going to go, but a really decent option. Gomez as well, when he's fit, maybe might go. But, of course, he's been injured for the last amount of the season. And Conza as well. But I've gone with Stones, Maguire and Cody as my main centre-backs in my squad. And Stones and Maguire as my main centre starting 11 defenders. Of course, players can play there as well. We're talking about Kyle Walker, uh, Declan Rice, who's also in my squad as well, and, and Jordan Henderson. They can do jobs at centre-back as well. So yes, we're only taking three. We've got players elsewhere that can fill in and add to the depth. But for me, when we're looking back at that criteria, versatility, form and quality, I think those two definitely do tick the boxes. Left back then. Another really difficult talking point. Again, we talk about some really, really good options. And I certainly think there's a lot of fantastic options on that left back position. We talk about uh, Luke Shaw, Ben Shilwell. Saka can also play left back as well. Cresswell of West Ham. Trippier can also play on the left. And Maitland Niles, of course, on loan from Arsenal at West Brom in the second half of the season. But some really, really good options there. We talk about Luke Shaw. I think he's going to have to start. For me, it's only one man and it is Luke Shaw. I'm not taking away from Ben Shaw has a really good left back and he is going in my squad. He's a great player, really good few seasons back at Leicester and his first season at Chelsea this season hasn't been poor at all. But Luke Shaw has been quality for Manchester United this season. He's definitely silenced the doubters. He's definitely silenced the critics. He's been great defensively and also has improved his game going forward as well. And in this formation with the players we've got, we need players that can put the ball into the box with a player like Kane as well, who's so good aerially. We need that whip from the, those balls coming in from the from the from either the wingers or the fullbacks. And Luke Shaw definitely does that now with his really, really improved game. So for me, Luke Shaw at left back. Chilwell, of course, behind him. Definitely a good player that can go into this squad, no doubt about it. Uh, the other players, quite unlucky to miss out. But for me, Luke Shaw definitely fits uh, that form, definitely fits that quality. And that's the same with Chilwell as well. But not so much as form as Luke Shaw, but certainly quality there as always. CDM then, defensive midfielder. I'm playing a 4-3-3 with a more defensive, ball-winning uh, defensive midfielder. And, of course, a centre midfielder. A little bit more box-to-box, -box, a little bit deeper, with a, with a little bit less freedom as our attacking midfielder. So that's why I've gone with it, with that 4-3-3. However, my CDM, my defensive midfielder, I've got Rice, Henderson, Phillips and Harry Winks as my players that can potentially play in that position. I'm only taking two out of the defensive midfielders. And I'm going with Rice in my starting eleven and Jordan Henderson as my player behind him. And the players behind him in the squad. However, I understand Calvin Phillips had a really decent season for Leeds and Harry Winks as well. Hasn't been as good as those. I don't think he gets near this squad, unfortunately, because he hasn't played one enough and two good enough when he has played for Tottenham this season. However, with time, he's still quite, he's got age on his side, Harry Winks, with a bit more time, a little bit more international experience. I think we can see Harry Winks in an English shirt. Um, Right now, though, Declan Rice had an unbelievable season at West Ham. Uh, Jordan Henderson's been injured a little bit, but generally last season, for example, he was incredible in that Liverpool side. Calvin Phillips as well, like we've just said there, a really good option. I wouldn't be surprised if Calvin Phillips does go to this competition, and I probably would take Calvin Phillips if Jordan Henderson was injured and couldn't make the competition. But if Jordan Henderson's fit, I will be taking Jordan Henderson as my defensive midfielder. So I've gone with Rice in my starting eleven and Jordan Henderson also in my 23-man squad. In front of them, then, we'll start with that centre mid role. I've gone with Mount, Belling, and Barkley, and Oxley Chamberlain and Ward Prowse as my potential players. The depth in there is absolutely great. Some incredible options. For me, this is one of the most difficult positions. It's quite an underrated difficult position. We talk about right backs and, and centre backs and left backs being quite difficult, and the attacking players are difficult as well. But this one really is not easy. We talk about the players we've got there. Mason Mount is the player I'm going to start. He is. 
a really, really good player for Chelsea this season. He since he came from with Frank Lampard, and implemented him to the into this Chelsea team. He hasn't looked back, has he? has been a fantastic, fantastic player for Chelsea. We look at Jude Bellingham as well. I think he's so unlucky not to make my squad. He's not going to make my 23-man squad. Please don't dislike the video. Give it a like just because Jude Bellingham doesn't make my squad because he's a player that generally is absolutely quality. However... It's so, it's so difficult to pick a 23-man squad after you've picked the players you have to play, after you've picked the three goalkeepers, for example, and the players like Kane and the players like uh, Sterling and, and Rashford and Foden and Grealish, the players that you, you must get in your squad, playing a player like Bellingham is so, you know, is, is really quite difficult. So I have gone with Bellingham missing out. Barkley, for me, doesn't get near this squad, unfortunately, at the moment. Same with Oxo Chamberlain. I'm taking Ward Prowse. He's a really, really good option. He's been fantastic for Southampton season. As the captain, I really like Ward Prowse. I think Mountain and Ward Prowse would be really, really good options in that centre mid spot. In front of them, then, we've gone with the cam. I'm starting Jack Grealish. He has to start. You see how important he is for Aston Villa this season. We talk about when Villa were flying, looking really good for Euro European spot, finishing the Europa League uh, spots. However, when he gets injured, you see the drop-off from Villa. You see how Villa do struggle without Jack Grealish. He is such an important player. And you, you wouldn't even have to be at Villa to notice that. He's been absolutely fantastic. The player, the way that he dribbles, the way that he can pass the ball, also strike a ball as well. He's got everything you want in an attacking midfielder. And I've, there's no doubt Jack Grealish has to go to this competition. Will he start? Will he not start in Gareth Southgate's shoes? I don't know. However, for me, he has to play. He has to be in that starting eleven. And Jack Grealish, no doubt, has to go to the twenty in the 23-man squad to go to the Euros this summer. But for me, he's got to start. He's in my eleven. Uh, the players also that can play in that attacking midfield role, we've gone with Foden, Madison, Joe's Lingard. They don't get in the squad. Foden, of course, does, but he plays in a different position. However, Madison, so unlucky not to miss out. He's been really, really good for Leicester this season. But for me, there's just not enough room. But, you know, he's had a great season, Madison. But right now, I can't see him getting in this squad because we've got so many fantastic options. And that's where the depth definitely doesn't work for players like Madison because you look at the players also in that position. Same with Curtis Jones as well. Some re a really, really good first season in, sort of in that starting eleven for Liverpool. Right now, he needs a bit more experience, in more international experience and club experience as well before he gets in this squad. And Lingard, another one that does miss out a really, really good season at West Ham, sort of second half of the season after January. For me, he did need a full season at West Ham for Lingard to be near this squad. And he is quite unlucky. It is a shame because I think Lingard, generally on his day, is an incredible player. And we've seen that for, for West Ham this season. But right now... He hasn't, as it is, as in the full season, he's shown that he isn't there yet in a Man United team. He hasn't been, hasn't been able to play and hasn't been at his best when he's in a red shirt. But generally, I really like Jesse Lingard, but he is unlucky to miss out. So I've gone with Jack Grealish as my only attacking midfielder. Of course, we've got players that are going to this squad that can play in that position as well. On the right wing spot then, we've got Phil Foden, we've got Sterling, we've got Lingard also as well, Jadon Sancho and Mason Greenwood of United. Some really, really good options there. I've gone with Phil Foden. For me, he has to play, he has to start because he's a great, great player. He's been incredible for Manchester City this season. Since he's come in, they're given the game time, been given the starting 11 licensing. He has been absolutely fantastic. He has to play. He's a great, great player. The dribbling, the agility on the player, the way that he can, you know, the way that he looks so mature for still a very, very young lad. He's got attributes to be an incredible, incredible footballer. Uh, and he is an incredible footballer, but he can, you know, he's got those attributes to take his net leg game to the next level. And who knows what that level is. For me, he has to play on the right wing. Sterling will definitely be going to this tournament, in my opinion. Really good option for Manchester City. Maybe not his best individual season for City, but he has to go. Sancho as well, a really, really good player for Dortmund. Maybe there's arguments that maybe he doesn't go and you take someone like Lingard instead of him. But for Jadon Sancho, generally, you look at the stats. He's had a good season at Borussia Dortmund. I take uh, Jadon Sancho. Greenwood unlucky to miss out. He hasn't played enough football yet, I don't think, for Manchester United this season. He's played quite a lot, but not enough for me. And also, he hasn't got in with the goals and assists as much. I understand that night, that number nine spot for Manchester United is a bit like a graveyard. The service you don't get. Maybe in an England team with the service from Foden, Sterling, Rash, maybe not Rashford, he's at Man United anyway, but Saka and players like that maybe that you know is a little bit better a little bit easier to play number nine for England than it is for United with that service but I don't really know for me my three players and the starting is Foden my three players though are Foden, Sterling and Jadon Sancho. On the left then we've got quite a few options Rashford for me is going to start we've also got Grealish, Saka and Barnes of course Grealish is going to the tournament but I'm starting him in that cam role. 
Saka, again, a really, really good option. And he is going. I think he's got to go. He's been a fantastic player for Arsenal this season. In a shining light and generally a very, very poor Arsenal team, Saka has to go. Harvey Barnes as well, quite unlucky not to play and not to, not to go to the squad. But again, a good season for Leicester, but he needs to be a little bit more consistent for me. A little bit more game time, a little bit more, uh, you know, involvement in goals and getting involved with, uh, you know, with this Leicester side a little bit more. And you think he's got a really good chance for the World Cup next summer. But for me, this summer, we're looking at the Euros this summer. Barnes doesn't get in there, but Rashford and Saka, some really good options for me. Those are the two that I'd be playing. As well, we've got Kane, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin as well as my strikers. But we've also got Abraham Ings, Greenwood also play there as well. Callum Wilson, Bamford and Ollie Watkins. Some great options there. Harry Kane as well. He has to play. Obviously, he's going to be the captain in my opinion. I think he should be captain. A really, really good player. Uh, he, he, outstanding player, actually. Not a really, really outstanding forward. And he has to play. I've also got Dominic Calvert-Lewin behind him as well. Really, really good. Similar strikers in terms of, you know, in the air, they're really, really good. Maybe not on the floor. I think Harry Kane's strike from the from the ground and not in his air, not in the air. I think that he definitely does trump Dominic, Dominic Calvert-Lewin there. But for me, he's the second striker. Players, on, you know, outside of that are unlucky not to miss out. Ings has got a good shell, maybe. Abraham as well. But for me, two players, Kane and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. So, it's not easy, is it? It's really quite difficult. And, it, it, you know, it, it, it's, it's so hard. But the quality that we've got and the players that we've got in these positions, you can see the depth. It's close to impossible to pick a 23-man squad. And also, as well, when you've picked your sort of players that have to go, you're left really quickly with about two free players that you could maybe just bring in and, and sort of, you know, add your, your dream picks, if you like. You know what I mean? When you've picked your free goalkeepers and when you've picked sort of your Canes and your Rashfords and your Fodens and your Grealishes and your Mounds, before you know it, you're ticking off players that have to go. In the end, you're going to have to players that you think have to go but can't go because you haven't got enough, you know, haven't got enough room in your squad. And that's really quite difficult. Um, when you're doing it. So definitely do check this out and please do give your starting 11 to the Instagram page because I want to be reacting to your England squad. This is mine, my starting 11. Pope, Short, uh, Short Stones, Maguire, Walker, Rice, Mount, Grealish, Rashford, Kane and Phil Foden. That's my starting 11. My squad's there as well. Pope, Pickford, Henderson, Shaw, Chilwell, Maguire, Stones, Connor, Cody, Walker, James, Trent, Rice, Alexander, uh, Rice, uh, Henderson, Mount, Ward, Prowse, Grealish, Rashford, Saka, Foden, Sterling, Sancho, Kane and Dominic Calvert lewin that's my 23-man squad. That's my starting 11. I hope we go with this. I hope Gareth Southgate does this. We may see him go with, with Dyer, which would be a bit of a shame. I don't think he's been good enough to get in the squad. I think he probably will still go, though, if, you, if you're asking Gareth Southgate as well. I don't know if Grealish will start on the Gareth Southgate as well. He may take Lingard. I wouldn't be too upset about that, but I'd be interested to see who he takes out of the squad if he does take him. He may take Phillips. For me, Henderson has to play if, if he's fit, and then if, if he's not, I'm happy for Phillips to come in, but really, really not easy for, for Gareth Southgate, and it wasn't easy for me to do it. However, I really, really hope he goes with the core of this squad because I think this is a really balanced squad. It's a player, it's a squad that gets the most out of it. It ticks the boxes, it ticks the criteria of the versatility, form, and of course, uh, quality. I'm really happy with it, but not easy at all. If you agree with me, please do leave a like on this episode of the podcast. Check out the recent episode of the podcast as well. I've been thoroughly enjoying the Easter, uh, the Easter work we've been doing on here with lots of dip, lots and lots of content coming your way as well. Please do subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to hit notification bell as well so you don't miss an episode of the podcast. Like I said, I'll say it for the third time. DM your squads to the Instagram page as because well I want to be reacting to your incredible and interesting England squads. It's not as easy as it looks. Um, uh, I've been Jack. This has been the Young Fan Podcast. This has been my England squad and 23-man squad. I'll see you in a bit.